Hey, you're the new kid. Yeah, what's it to you? Friendly, aren't you? Give me a break, loser. Hey, relax, friend. You're all pent up. Go easy or they put you on medication. They did to me. Boy, you nearly sent me insane. That's fascinating. Now if you'll excuse I me. I said relax, friend. Get off, man. Listen to me, tough guy. You just arrived at the toughest school in the country, and I'm offering to be your friend. Trust me, in a place like this, you're gonna need friends. So it's up to you. You gonna play nice or what? Yeah, sure. Good. So how about I show you around? First off, it's important to note the difference between a sociopath, in which I'm here to discuss with you today, and their cousin the psychopath. These are two archetypal characters that are similar, but possess key traits, or toppings, that distinct them from each other. Although the two disorders are referred to interchangeably, they definitely aren't the same condition. But it's not uncommon for a sociopath to exhibit psychopathic tendencies, and vice versa. Sociopathy is different for every individual, and it should be the same for your character. One major difference between a sociopath and a psychopath is that while a psychopath tends to swoon and charm their victims, Victims, sociopaths are much more blunt in their ploys to use them and let them know they're a target. As Jimmy, the protagonist of Bully, asks our sociopath Gary, what's your problem? Gary tells him exactly what his problems are. Hey man, what's your problem? Well, ADD primarily, but also life. My parents, the school, Western civilization, but really, honestly, while psychopaths me. are known to exhibit no conscience, sociopaths typically prove themselves to be aware of their spite when interacting with others they believe to be lesser than them. PD tells Gary to lay off the ruthless teasing, only for Gary to be amused and barb at him even more. Why don't you leave me alone, Gary? <laughs> Look at you! Leave me alone, Gary! I'm really self important now that I finally hit puberty. What's your problem? I'm just being nice to the new kid as he passes through Bullworth on his inevitable journey to prison. Look, I gotta unpack. Would you guys mind getting out of here? <laughs> oh, now look what you've done, Pete. Jimmy can't stand you already. Even as Gary seems rather calm in this scene, typically associated with the psychopathic character, he does later on grow increasingly hostile and even violent, as his poise are frequently ruined by Jimmy, the kid who he's lured into a friendship with him until Jimmy realized Gary's totalitarian plan to take over Bullworth Academy. Of course, Gary's plan isn't at all realistic, and he knows it. But his persistence on wanting to achieve the unachievable is driven by self-destruction. Take this into note when constructing your sociopath, that their downfall is often led by their own self-destructive tendencies. Gary! Moron! Why'd you do it, Gary? Why not? I won! I tricked everyone! Starting with you, the head, the loser kids in town, and the prefects! Me! I won! You are sad, man! I might be sad, but I've won your world, moron! And don't you forget it! You did all my dirty work for me, Hopkins! You're like a puppet! Only dumber! Whatever! Let's finish this! Gary challenges Jimmy to follow him through a dangerous sight in the academy that would surely lead to grave injuries given the great height Gary climbs as he taunts at Jimmy to catch him. It's also important to remember that self-destructive behavior is a key similarity between the sociopath and its psychopath counterpart, and this self-destruction that we've described stems from hubris, of course. Excessive pride in one's abilities, just as Stefano Valentini from The Evil Within 2 had, as Gary Smith does now in Bully. If you prove to be one thing this one year, it's thing slow! You'll never catch me, Hopkins! Is that sociopaths are created due to environmental influence, like abuse within their family, whereas it's believed psychopaths are born with their condition. It's briefly mentioned by the principal of Bullworth that Gary's father has been in jail before. We don't know why, but this alone would be traumatic for Gary to face, especially if his father had been sent to jail because of domestic violence. He has developed mistrust in others, and even shames Jimmy for making friends at Bullworth Academy. You're too trusting, Jimmy! From the start, you were pathetically naive! Because of Jimmy's openness to others, Gary sees him as easily manipulative because he's able to trust people unlike himself, for he believes trust is a weakness that leads to being taken advantage of. So sad, so hopeless, get 
just needing a friend, any friend. You were so easy to manipulate, Jimmy. And once we were friends, it was all so clear. You had your lust for power, but without intelligence to back it up, using you as a pawn was so wonderfully obvious. Gary's insistent need for control stems from a possible past that he used to live with having no control over anything at all. And now that he's at Bullworth Academy, he decides to make up for it. The thing is, if I win, you're just another punk! You win, and you'll be sent away even quicker for beating up the head boy! Why'd you do it, Gary? Because I can! Because making little people like you and the morons who run this place eat out of the palm of my hand feels great! But I never did anything to you! You would've if I'd given you the chance! Face it, I'm smarter than you! Oh, congratulations! <laughs> You're smarter than me! You hate everyone, and everyone hates you! Genius! The head likes me! I tied him up, turned his dumb school into a battleground, got kids expelled, unfairly, put several others into therapy, and he still likes me! You're such a loser! <laughs> well, at least my mom doesn't make her living on her back! You're dead! <laughs> oh!